So I'm heading over to the back house to pick up the keys to go inside. So I thought I'd just take you with me. Um, I will be doing a video there a little bit later. A um, bit of a podcast too. And we'll see what happens. So we're almost there. Um, we live in the same town as the back house um, in Penetang Machine. Actually, I was born and raised here. Our family has lived in this area in this town since about the 1820s and we're going to talk a little bit about Penetang Machine when we do the podcast a little bit later because it comes into play a little bit with the Beck history. Actually Mr. Beck played a big role in developing the town as it is today. Let's cross the road Ooh. and happy Friday the 13th everybody. One of my most favorite days there is. OMG. Hi there. I'm just picking up a key. I was told it was in here. It is? Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. All right, we got the key, and we are told to go into this black door. Look at this view. What a beautiful property. Okay, guys, so we are in the back house. We're going to go up the stairs. Um, I'm being a little bit quiet because there are other people that are staying here. Hopefully you can hear me over the creaky floor. It's really loud, sorry. The stairs are beautiful though, absolutely beautiful. nice to see um, a home this old in such good condition. Not what we're used to seeing. Okay, creaky floors again. I love the windows. The windows are neat. Upstairs on the third floor where we're going to be staying. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty creepy. Creepy stuff around, and it's old too, so. Beautiful window over there. There's Danny, the skeptic Danny. Probably the creepiest thing in this place right now. <laughs> We are staying in room 301. We are here. We are going to set up our podcast. I'll show you around the place too. Um, the podcast is going to be um, following the little tour though. Okay. See you inside. Getting ready for the podcast. Danny is just setting it up. We're going to be doing it in the, the sitting room here. I have um, a filter right now on my camera that detects, I guess, temperatures. So this is the uh, main bedroom up here. I 
and if you're just coming in, I have a filter on my camera that will detect temperature. So if there is anything around, um, we should be able to pick it up. It's pretty creepy, not going to lie. It's pretty creepy in here, in the dark. In this room here, it's like, I guess, a second bedroom. It has a nice day bed in it. Curtain. Ooh. Just a closet. The temperature's definitely dropped in here, but I'm pretty sure that's just literally the temperature dropping. It was pretty warm. I think the heat's off now. They had the heat going today. Like, beautiful old school tub. And it's so tempting to have a bath, but I don't, I don't know just yet. Definitely not going to have a shower. Not doing the shower curtains tonight. I guess it was, maybe it's a pantry. It's right off the kitchen. But there's a like mannequin heads and hats and stuff in here and games. But if you look straight ahead, that's a hole in the wall that goes into the living room. Danny, can you pop into the hole in the wall? It's actually, I don't know what the purpose of it is, but it kind of freaked me out at first. So that, that it got blurry. There's a Danny on the other side. I guess I'm thinking it was a pantry. Anyhow, that hole, I don't know. There's the other side, that hole. So it's kind of creepy when you look at it like that. When I first got here, I looked at it, and then I seen all these heads, and I'm like, what the heck? Anyway, I think it's pretty eerie here. Danny, the skeptic, doesn't... <laughs> think anything of it he's actually daring ghosts to come out so I hope they do I hope they come out and get you I hope they can last about 200 pounds of throwing across the room they can, they can do what they want oh, damn right they can <laughs> that door's not opening so it's probably a ghost um, will you stop <laughs> Uh, see what I have to deal with here, living with a skeptic. Now he's making fun of them. You just keep mocking them. I will. <laughs> I'll prove you're right. Um, oh, it's going to be a long night. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a special podcast. Hello there. We are at the Beck House. Um, we are facing the kitchen, and behind us is the parlor area. We're going to talk a little bit about Penetang Machine and um, the Beck family and a little bit about the house. And um, we'll see if something maybe happens around us in the background. Personally, I just hope one uh, spirit comes up behind Danny and just scares the heck out of him. Scares the bejeebers out of me. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Alrighty. Take it away. Okay, so... Penetang machine is an Ojibwe word that means place of the white rolling sands and it's because of the area's beaches around here. So the town of Penetang machine is one of the oldest in Canada is west of Quebec City. In the early 1600s the shores of Penetang machine were the land of the Huron-Wendat Confederacy. The Huron-Wendat were a nation of farmers, hunters, and traders who lived in large communal groups of up to 2,000 people in several longhouses. Uh, they were a matrilineal society who traced their descendant and inheritance through the female line. The women were responsible for the majority of the farming, which sustained the people as they grew three-quarters of their food. By 1615, the Huron Wendat had forged a formal trade alliance with the French through Etienne Brule and Samuel de Champlain, and that helped develop links between New France and the Huron Wendat. The settlement of fur traders and voyagers from Drummond Island in 1828 and farm settlers from Quebec around the 1840s established Penetanguishene as a bilingual community. Its bilingual character remains today with 15 to 20% of the population still French-speaking. 
So the Beck family was considered one of the town's founding families. Thus, the Grand Queen Anne on Fox Street would have been considered the first house that was home to the example-setting, proud first family of Penetanguishene. All eyes would have been on the Beck house during those years in the spotlight. Oh, definitely. Like, it, even just looking at it now, and we're pretty much staying in, like, a small part of the house. Um, we've only seen, what, maybe... A th not even a third. Not, no, no, no. We've hardly seen any of the house, and it's already amazing. Um, a lot of the... Uh, original fixtures even some of the furniture here is was already here they've done so well preserving this house so I can imagine back in the day it would have just been like talk of the town because it's it's massive yeah and it's beautiful architecture too I can only imagine back in the day when it was fresh oh yeah it looked even better too right yeah despite being the wealthiest man in the province in the late 19th century Carl Beck left his eldest daughter, Mary, only one dollar. And why is that? Well, after Carl's wife's early death, Mary was tasked with raising her brothers and sisters. She left the family at some point to get married and have a family of her own, uh, which was a move that Carl did not appreciate, to the point where he basically wrote Mary out of his will. Yeah, yeah so when he passed away, he left, you know small fortunes to all of his other children and there were nine in that family and because he felt i guess personally insulted by mary leaving i mean they were battling each other too for years yes yeah, yeah. yeah he probably would have been yeah the um the beck siblings did pretty good it was sort of um high society sort of you know hangs around with high society so they they sort of married into other very either wealthy families or at least you know good families so the current owners of the house claim that as many as 18 spirits reside within its walls uh, visitors have reported all sorts of paranormal activity doors closing on their own lingering smells of cigar smoke hanging around the rooms and dark shadows moving through the halls yeah so we'll see tonight I guess <laughs> they he was known as a relatively philanthropic man with a penchant for enjoying flashy toys so he bought the first automobile in the town which was an Oldsmobile in 1903 uh, which is now on display at the Penetanguishene Centennial Museum the angry female ghosts perhaps Mary or Carl's older daughters even uh, don't just stay at the house but are said to appear on the adjacent Church Street. Passersby claim to see apparitions of Victorian women strolling along the street, and they assume these spirits are connected to the haunted Beck house. Yeah, so I actually have a story about a Victorian woman. So it was quite a few years ago, I'd say about 20 years ago, and it was on Halloween night, and I was walking down Main Street. So I was walking down Main on the sidewalk toward Water Street. So Pentang, if you have not been here, it's a lot of hills. So the Main Street, like a good part of the Main Street right down to the town dock is a hill. So I'm walking down the hill and there's a cross street here. On one side it's Simcoe, the other side is Water Street. What I saw was what I thought was a person in a costume, but it was a woman. What was that sound? Yeah, okay, now they're both chugging. Well, isn't that weird? Must have been a ghost. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what I saw was a Victorian woman, which I thought was a woman in a Victorian dress, like a full costume of a Victorian woman, crossing the road from Simcoe to Water across Maine, and I'm walking down the hill at Maine, 
And I looked and I thought, oh, that's like a really cool costume, right? But she was by herself. And then sort of looking again, I'm seeing that she looked a little fuzzy, like a little foggy. She wasn't quite solid. And she walked from Simcoe Street over to Water. And then by the time I got down to Water Street and looked down, I didn't see anybody walking that way. But it was just weird. And I kind of wasn't believing my eyes. But she definitely didn't look solid. Like kind of three quarters there. So when I was hearing about these stories of people seeing Victorian women walking around basically the downtown area, um, it sort of brought back that story and I remember how creepy it was. She kind of just disappeared down Water Street. It was strange. Like it was, like I said, she just was not solid. But then again, Maybe it was somebody in a costume. I mean, it was Halloween, so I kind of just wrote it off later as, yeah, it was somebody in a costume. But I'm telling you right now, she was not fully solid. The clothes wasn't solid. Like, there was nothing about her that was solid. It was sort of like three quarters of the way there. Mm. <coughs> so, I mean, just an interesting thing. Kind of matches what other people are saying. She could have been going to the, the trading post that's there on that corner. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, the downtown area is quite old. Penetang was built basically from the water up. And that building itself has been there since 18, <coughs> 1840? Pardon me. It's dry in here. Yeah, it is dry and warm. I've asked the ghost to make it a little more chilly in here, but... <laughs> Apparently that didn't uh, convince them. I think it's cooled down a little bit. This magnificent house was the home of one of the most prominent lumbermen in not only our area, but across northern and southern Ontario as well. Carl Beck's influence stretched from Toronto in the south to Sudbury in the north. Immigrating to Canada from Germany, Carl Maximilian Charles Beck arrived in Penetang Machine in 1865. By 1873, he had constructed the Red Mill with two partners. The businesses thrived, and in 1878, he bought out his partners, and C. Beck Lumbering Company was born. Beck was part of the group that lobbied to get a rail line constructed between Penetang Machine and Barry. This enabled him to increase production and build a new mill. So pretty much back in the day, I think it was much easier to get from York to Barrie, but Barrie up here was quite difficult. Um, it was barely even a row. Well, I don't know, maybe at that time? It was really only the one road, for what I believe. It probably would have been, yeah. Yeah. Just one trade route. Yeah, so smart. He, um, he lobbied for it and they got it. Two Beck Company stores in town played an integral role in the Penetang machine economy. His employees were paid half their wages in Beck tokens and half in Canadian currency. And the reason that he gave the Beck tokens was because he wanted his employees to shop at the company store. The tokens were accepted at almost every store in town until 1920. Beck was one of the wealthiest lumber barons in the country amassing a fortune of $12 million at the time of his death in 1915. So $12 million in 1915. That's, that's a lot. That is a lot. That's, I wish I could figure out what it would be in today's dollars, but geez, even $12 million in today's dollars is pretty fantastic. Yeah. It's got to be what, 1915 till now? That's more than 10 times that. It's no, got to be. For sure. The Charles Beck Manufacturing Company Limited, um, now Penetang Machine Museum, that's on Burke Street in Penetang Machine, operated from 1875 to 1969, so it had a good stretch there. Yeah, it was going for a while. Almost, uh, what was that, 90, 
four years? Yeah, I mean, pretty close to 100 years. Yeah. Uh, Charles Beck also had business interests in Midland Electric Street Railway, Light and Power Company, two stores, and the Dominion Stove Foundry, as well as others. So he had his hand in everything. I guess that's what it is, is you sort of start with a business, and then you just invest and reinvest, and that's how he made that $12 million yeah. back in the day. Oh, yeah. Beck also served his community. He sat on town council from 1889 to 1896, with 1892 and 1895 being the years that he served as mayor of Penetang Machine. So wealthy and well-known and, yeah. Successful politician, I guess. Yeah. He also sponsored a hockey team each year, donated the land for the Presbyterian Cemetery, where he and his family are buried, and we're going to bring you there as well. And donated the original curling rink to Penetang Machine Curling Club. So the Beck House is a Queen Anne Revival style home. It dominated at the time a fair portion of Fox Street. The original slate roof gives this house an extra air of richness. So it was the only home in the area to have a slate roof. So that is being rich. So the Beck House itself is number 12 of the 20 most haunted places in the world. Um, as much as you don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, no. We've seen all kinds of things since we got here, so. Don't be sarcastic. You see, this is, well, that is sad. They can bring it on. Yeah, I hope so. You're going to get it later. Pick up the fridge and empty <laughs> everything on top of me or something. No, it's not even that kind of thing. From what I hear and have heard and a fair, it, it's supposed to be female presence. So it could be um, Amelia Beck, the wife. It could be Mary Beck, the daughter. But apparently there's uh, definitely two female presence here in the home. Spirits. Um, then again, people say that there's more. I don't think the spirit of Mr. Beck is here. Apparently is at the museum or what would have been a store. We've been there and this is where I don't get why Danny is such a non-believer because we've been to that museum before mm. and we've taken pictures of the upstairs where everybody says Mr. Beck sort of hovers around this upstairs. It must have been his office. So we've taken pictures up there, and the pictures had orbs in them, and they are legitimate orbs. If I can find those pictures, I'm definitely going to include them in this video. Um, and they hung around my daughter, mostly. Everywhere she walked around in that the upstairs of that museum, the orbs were surrounding her. So, interesting. But I mean, Danny saw it, and he said they were orbs, so... Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Old. I guess. Now there's two rooms up here. This is apparently where all the activity is. It was just the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> it just... was just the fridge, but it was unexpected. <laughs> Holy jeez. Okay. Were you actually like? No, I either? wasn't. I wasn't even expecting that sound. Oh. Yeah, I was just. I was focusing on what I was gonna say. Anyway, um, apparently people get their hair pulled. Um, the other room or apartment, pretty much, has a little bit more of the action. This is sort of like the lesser action. So, I mean, I'm hoping there's still something that's going to happen here. Fridge again. <laughs> Back to the house. Yeah. So as we mentioned, this house is known as one of the most haunted houses in Ontario. Here lived Beck and his family after his wife passed away. The eldest daughter, again, Mary, who could be hanging around here, uh, was put in charge of the younger children years later when he died, when her father died. 
Again, he left her a dollar in the will. Today, an angry, apparently angry, female ghost, presumably Mary, is said to appear in the upstairs windows. That was the fridge. <laughs> The fridge is the most active thing in here. So Never mind. Right <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Charles Beck was born May 11th, 1915. He was age 76 when he passed away. So he had a really strange death. But I mean, in those times, I guess there was a lot of that weird stuff that happened. He drowned. Um, I believe it was in Penetanguishene Harbor. It was definitely Penetanguishene Bay. But his carriage went into the water. And he went down with it. He drowned. Uh, but he was age 76, so he still did pretty good, considering the times. You know, there were um, diseases and whatnot back then. So, I mean, he survived a lot. Yeah. Um, Amelia Doms Beck is his wife. She was born in 1850. She died June 2nd, 1893, and she was approximately 42 or 43 years old. So he lived about 30, just a little over 30 years longer than his wife. Anyway, we are going to check out that cemetery tomorrow. We're going to check out the Penetang Museum. We will let you know if anything happens here. We're probably going to end the podcast and I'll do a little bit of filming around the place and maybe we'll sit up for a little bit and see if anybody pops up. Yeah. And I, I hope so. <laughs> I might get thrown around the room for talking, what do they say these days, talking smack. Yeah. Or what? Yeah. What would they have said Invoking. Back then? Perhaps I'll give them the business and I'll get what for. They might understand that a bit better. Be careful what you wish for. Why? I'll prove, <laughs> I'll prove myself wrong. And I'll Why? have egg on my face. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll see. I'm okay with. Anyway, guys, that is our short podcast about the Beck family, the Beck house, and a little bit about Penetang Machine. And we will show you... A little bit more of the house later on. And we're going to show you a little bit more about Penetang Machine tomorrow. So thanks for joining us for this portion. We'll see you in a few moments. Stay spooky. <laughs> hey guys. So we are in the big bedroom. It's a little after one o'clock. Um, this is where apparently a lot of the action is in this room um, is in this main bedroom so I think something's already happening oh there's we have motion sensor lights there shouldn't be anything triggering them right now we're not really moving they can't detect us but it kind of seems like there's something happening anyway I'm going to spin around the camera So over here we just we have candles right over here is we have one of our motion sensor lights um, it's a little round thing in front of the lantern and 
We have a motion sensor light right there set up. If anything were to go near it or by it, it would definitely go on and it has been. It's gone on and off since we came into the room. Thank you.